we have the computer-based method, we're speaking with an API. On this side, we have a local custom 3D models. We are generating a 3D model locally from data from the cloud, right? We are using filter parameters, parameters only for you at a specific <coughs> time. And we have some helpers, software, uh, other computer bases, or whatever you want to use. Right? So we're going to go to the other side of the project, the real world, in, in, the in real life projects. What do we have there? On this side, we have a, a huge uh, leap in technology. One of the greatest things is the pad. We can now look at PDFs in the working sites. It's crazy, isn't it? No? <laughs> Five minutes ago it was. But uh, this is common today. Everybody do it. Today it's, uh, we're scanning barcodes and uh, whatever, you know. But what we're going to see here in the future is we're going to start using our, our devices. I have a little film here. Let's um, see what we have. We're going to start using our devices as a window to the real world. Our, uh, we're going to use pads, uh, telephones, uh, laptops. Uh, using GPS coordinates and, and synchronizing. This is actually not even, uh, it's a real product. product. Scanscale has bought this and are now visualizing the 3D model on the building site. Nothing magic about it. Comes a new revision, it's going to be a new model in the, in, the, in the screen. And they walk around and look and everything is exciting. Yeah? Who is this? Anyone know? You know? Some uh, uh, unknown guy? This is the co founder of Google. The co-founder as well, that's good, good <laughs> gold star. <laughs> this is uh, the Google co-founder, Sergey, and he has the product glass on him. This is a pair of glasses where you can look on the beam information in, in real time in the real world, right? Uh, and, and they're actually doing this right now, they're, you know, putting out these, these glasses so you can, you can use them for Facebook, call, whatever you want to do. The interesting thing is there was a school in, in, uh, in Japan where they're actually uh, using it at the billing site. You're putting the 3D model on top of the, on top of the real world and you actually go walking around and, and looking and touching on the 3D model and then you have no blueprints. Instead, the 3D model tells you what to do. It says, here should be a, a board, right? Put a nail here. And so, so the one and it's blinking, please nail here. You stop nailing and then it's off, done. <coughs> Number two, it's showing you how to build. And I think this would mean we have no uh, blueprints in the future. Why should you? You're actually drawing it 4D. Why should you make a blueprint? Cost you money, right? Today, when I do my practice, we do 3D models, and we not we, we don't get paid to make blueprints. You know, it's a blueprint is a 2D representation of a 3D model. I don't know why should we use it, but you know, this is me. So I'm going to think this is going to be very interesting: augmented reality, working in real time, working in 4D, and it's going to be applied to the to the to the real world. And this is a next thing that's coming out right now. Everybody's going to be a producer. What is this? 3D printer. Sorry? 3D printer. 3D printer. This one is called MakerBot. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, it costs 5,000 Swedish kroners. It's an open source project. You can get the blueprints on Wikipedia. You can build your own by the parts of Klaus Olsson. And uh, when it comes to new uh, upgrade, you go down to Klaus Olsson, you get the new parts, and you just you know, reconfigure it. Because they changed the blueprint on Wikipedia. You can also buy the kit and just you know, buy it. And, and uh, you can print in glass, plastic, uh, now there's a wood printer, I heard, uh, <coughs> steel, uh, you can print moving parts. Uh, they actually print the weapons now, terrorists on the wrong side of the border. Uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting uh, uh, evolution. Uh, we're actually looking at this one. Have anybody seen this one before? I think you did, right? Yeah. So this is a D shape, the 3D printer that prints concrete one to one. So you print, you can print the house. There was a Dutch architect in the newspaper last week, I think. He made a uh, you know, proposal for printing a house. He was not the first one. The first one was actually uh, Norman Foster. He made the first house, but he didn't get any press on it. This one is out there. It's working. There's no problem. You have a sand, and you press print, and it's just start printing. You can send it to the moon, print a couple of houses, you know, and you have moon base. It's pretty interesting. So in the future, everybody's a producer, everybody's a maker. You know? We can have high custom, uh, uh, I said in English, high custom uh, fre uh, frequency on the building site. You don't have to have standard components anymore. You can just print them on site what you need. You can go on vacation to Rome, take a picture of the Colosseum, and print it in Stockholm, right? I can print you, I can send you an email with a, with a copy room and uh, you can print it at home. I mean, there's the endless possibilities, right? And this is right there. <coughs> 
the next huge revolution, revolution, which also has to do with Beam, is this one. This is an RFID tag. Does anybody know what that is? As an intelligent uh, barcode, which has get activated by passive uh, electricity. Uh, right? You can have it in a room and uh, you can put this on everything you're building. So this one contains your GUID. If you have an object on this table, I put the, the tag here, and it says the GUID, right? Now I know exactly where it is. I have a GPS, I have XYZ, I have the GUID. It's right in this room, and it's in my Revit computer. This one costs about, uh, I think it costs two, two crowns a piece today, and they're going down the price. So in the future, it's not only going to be barcodes, it's going to be really intelligent, uh, really intelligent uh, microchips. You know, it's, it's actually an electronic product. This has been used in the car industry, in the, in the flight industry for years. It's been used uh, in the logistics for so long. Now it's getting to the building size. Uh, it's another interesting technology. This is a 3D scanner. 3D scanner shoots a laser beam 360 degrees around, and it goes to 3 millimeters position. And you put this cloud, put it in your CAD program, and you don't have to make a measurement. And in the beginning, what used to make you really nice films and animation, but now we're actually putting it to juice. And uh, now we can actually, uh, you know, uh, just scan it off and start drawing pretty much. Make a pretty model on top of it and make your, uh, make your model. Uh, we've been, um, they, they are coming uh, a different software now, and actually one that's uh, kind of like photographs the building site, tells you automatically how much has been built, and is putting it back to the to the projection planning program, the beam parameters, the 4D parameter is going to be synchronized. So you pretty much scan the site, it ends up in the Vicor software, and then everything is done here in Revit, and it's all synchronized and, and happy. It's really fast, really cheap, and I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty neat, huh? Okay, I was going to see if it work. And this one, uh, so what's this? It's a robot, it's building a house. Exciting, huh? No? <laughs> well, there, every, brick, every one of those bricks has a grid, it has an X and a Y and a Z. The robot knows where to go, right? So, why can't you just build it? Right now in America, they're experimenting with the automatic building sites. You have a site, you put up four corners, you put the stuff in here, you have the 3D BIM model, you press build house, and the robot starts building the house. You know, it's not really science fiction actually, but it's going to be there. So, uh, one more time, we're going to start drawing houses, with a BIM, you're actually drawing the way it should be built. So get good at BIM, I'm telling you. And maybe you've seen this film as well. The team in, uh, I think it's America, has developed the same concept a bit further. Have you seen this before? You know, why should you have a standing robot? You know, it's not really... So this is uh, small helicopters doing the same thing. You can actually change the shape here. You can have one shape, have a parameter design, change the parameters, press print again, and the helicopter starts changing around the new construction. How about that? It's pretty neat. Okay, so this is pretty much where we're going to go. This is the, the framework for the future of BIM. BIM in the cloud, a couple of uh, interfaces, and a couple of uh, functions to the left mm -hmm. and right. A uh, couple of output services, a couple of input services, and of course, automatization. Now it's up to everybody in here to make their own innovations. How can we use this for our own best? How can, we, uh, how can we get the best output device, the best input device? How can we use our 3D models in an interesting way? How can we communicate through borders? For example, what if you had uh, two 3D models on the left side? I have one of my own model and uh, my client has another one. I don't want to see his, his, uh, his uh, analytic parameters. You know, we don't have to. I just get my own. We're going to sync two identity models. Through the, through the cloud, right? We never send a file. But the parameters I use, I have in my own uh, pocket and they have their own through the, through the API and the computer space. So this is uh, it's out there and it's uh, been used in a couple of products already. At this product, the uh, NKS, for example, we had a computer base in the middle, we have uh, four functions, uh, and I told you before, it was synchronizing 22 million parameters every Friday. And uh, one lady sitting on the right side. Uh, working with 64 3D models in real time, one person instead of 130. I mean, it's it's a it's a big change here. Uh, 